Hi, I'm Charles Tran, and welcome to Live Mobile Technology. In my previous video, part one of the ACS 100 series, I gave you an overview along with the planning and key considerations for the system. Today in part two, I'll walk you through Brevo ACS 100, wiring and connecting an electric strike and card reader into the Brevo access controller, from assessing site readiness to evaluating the environment where the system will be installed. One of the first steps in site preparation is conducting a site survey. I need to determine what type of door the ACS 100 card reader will be installed on, as well as the wall type, such as drywall, brick, or cinder block. I'll also check for a drop ceiling and confirm whether I'm installing a strike or a mag lock. All of these factors influence how the wiring will be run and configured. According to code, low voltage and high voltage wiring must be separated by at least two inches, this is especially important near areas like light switches, where high voltage lines are often present. In those cases, I'll try to shift the low voltage wiring left or right away from that bay. For drywall installations, I also need to locate the studs and check for any fire breaks that might require drilling. These factors help ensure a clean path for wiring. Once that's done and I've assessed the door, the next step is pulling wire from the door to the head end. Running it in this direction helps prevent snags and reduces unnecessary wire use. For mag lock installations, I may also need to install a third-party power supply at the head end. In this case, I'll be pulling not just a CAT5E or CAT6 cable, but also an 18.2 or 18.6 wire. I'll be uploading a separate video on my channel covering CAT5E and CAT6 wiring, how it's done and why we use these cables. But for now, in this video, we'll focus on using 18.2 or 18.6 wire for the installation. Later in this video, I'll show you how this wiring works. As always, maintain at least two inches of separation from any high voltage wiring and support the cables every three feet to avoid sagging. Never lay cables directly on top of a drop ceiling as this can cause issues later on. Once your cable is pulled, the next step is to cut your wall opening and route the cable to the ACS 100's location. For ADA compliance, install the reader at a center height between 32 and 38 inches. In this example, we're working with drywall, have located the studs, and cut a single gang hole. For mullion installations, you'll need a smaller, more discreet opening to avoid exposing cabling or hardware. While a back box or trim ring can be used behind the ACS 100 or even a box on the opposite side of the wall, it's best to minimize visible hardware for a cleaner finish. In some cases, space next to the door isn't available and you're limited to the mullion itself. That's exactly why the mullion style ACS 100 exists. These installs require extra attention to how you're routing cable. Door headers may be capped or open and that can affect access. For any optional or additional devices that connect to the card reader and electric strike, like locking hardware, Rex motion sensors, or door position switches, it's best practice to route all cables back to a single point, such as your ACS 300 or any compatible access controller whenever possible. We won't cover these optional devices in this video, but you can check out my YouTube channel for a complete list of optional hardware and detailed guides on how to use them. Once the cables are in place, the next step is installing the backplate. I've secured it to the wall here. If you're mounting to a hard surface like brick or block, be careful not to warp the backplate, as this can make it difficult to mount the ACS 100 cleanly. I'll be posting a separate video on my channel for part 3 of the ACS 100 series, which will cover mounting and installation. But for now, in this part, I'm going to show you how to connect the Brevo ACS 100 card reader to the ACS 300, ACS 6000, or any compatible Brevo access controller. Let's begin with the Brevo ACS 100 card reader. I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide using a diagram so you'll know exactly which cables to use and how to connect them properly. There are two common types of card readers you might use, VGAND and OSDP. Both of these can be connected using an 18.6 access control cable, which is designed specifically for card reader installations. First, the Wiegand card reader. In this setup, you'll use the 18.6 cable to connect your Wiegand card reader to the ACS 300 or ACS 6000 series controller. The diagram shows each wire in the 18.6 cable being matched to the appropriate terminal on the controller. 
making sure the signal and power connections are correct. Start by matching the wires to their designated functions. The white wire is for RS485B. The green wire goes to RS485A. Red is your 12 volt DC power out. Black is for ground. The brown wire is used for a switched ground or 12 volt DC trigger. And finally, the blue wire is for REX or request to exit. Now let's connect the 18.6 cable to the ACS100 or ACS6000 series controller. Start with the white wire. This connects to D1RXD-. Next, the green wire goes to D0RXD+. The red wire provides 12 volts DC power and the black wire is for ground. Finally, connect the blue wire to the green LED line, which also functions as TXD+. Now let me show you how to wire the OSDP card reader to the ACS100 or ACS6000 series controller. The OSDP card reader wiring remains the same, but when connecting it to the controller, we'll only be using four wires. The green wire connects to GP101RXD+. The white wire goes to GP101RXD-. The black wire is for ground GND, and the red wire connects to 12VDC power. Make sure all connections are secure and matched to the correct terminals on the controller. In this next diagram, I'll show you how to wire an electric strike, or door strike, using 18-2 cable from the door side back to the controller. At the door, the electric strike will have two wires, typically brown and red. Connect the red wire to the NO, normally open terminal on the controller, and connect the brown wire to the COM, common terminal. Note. Most Brevo controllers support electric strikes if you enable the wet contact option. By default, the output is set to dry contact, so make sure to switch it to wet contact in your controller settings. Refer to your ACS 300 or Brevo controller manual for instructions on how to enable this feature. All devices share the same black ground wire. The ACS 100's pigtail is keyed, so it only fits one way. If it doesn't slide in easily, don't force it. Flip it to the correct orientation for a proper fit, then secure it with screws for a solid connection. This prevents the pigtail from coming loose during mounting. If you forget what each wire does, there's a label on the back with a lead breakdown. There's a helpful wiring summary on a sticker at the back of the ACS100. You'll also find the built-in Ethernet jack. Just terminate your Ethernet cable and plug it in. Since this is a PoE device, power is supplied through the Ethernet connection by default. While a third-party power supply can be used via the pigtail if needed, most installs rely on PoE. Lastly, be sure to trim or tape off any unused leads to prevent shorts or damage. Trim back any unused leads to avoid accidental shorts with each other or contact with hidden studs or screws in the wall. For added protection, bend them back and tape them down securely to prevent future damage. At this point, I've mounted the ACS100 and connected the Ethernet cable to the PoE switch, which powers the device. With the Ethernet cable connected, the ACS100 is now powered. The final step is securing the set screw at the bottom using a standard Phillips head screwdriver. This locks the unit in place and prevents it from being easily removed. Once secured, you'll see the ACS100 has a clean, solid finish. My administrator has added a mobile credential, and as a final test, I can now press the button to unlock the door. Here are a few final considerations for the ACS100. Keep in mind the total power budget is limited to 12 volts DC at 650 milliamps. This includes everything, your locking hardware, RX motion, secondary OSDP reader, and any auxiliary devices, so be sure to calculate total draw accordingly. Avoid powering mag locks directly through the ACS 100, even if they fall within the power limits. Mag locks typically require a fire relay drop and have inrush current issues that the ACS 100 isn't designed to handle. We hope this overview gave you a clearer understanding of the ACS 100 wiring and connecting electric strike and card reader into the Brebo Access Controller. Stay tuned for part 3 of the Brebo ACS 100 series, where I'll walk you through mounting and installation. For more Brebo content, head over to my channel and check out the Brebo playlist. And don't forget to like and subscribe.